Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today I am going to show you the workflow in 3D. There's actually four different steps when you work in 3D. The first one is geometry. The second one is surface. The third one is lighting and environment. And fourth is rendering and animation. So I'm going to attempt to show you all of this in a very short period of time inside of Photoshop. <laughs> things a lot of people don't know about me is I also went to visual effects school so I'm gonna cram two years of what I learned in visual effects in 3d into just a few minutes here in Photoshop now here's some of the things that I've done using a more complex program called Maya but you can actually do a lot inside of Photoshop here's some things that I created entirely inside of Photoshop that's everything from modeling all the way through to lighting and rendering without using any other programs so right now I'm gonna show you how to do 3D inside of Photoshop. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start from absolutely nothing. And the first thing we want is geometry. Geometry is the mesh, is the 3D object itself. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a new scene right now, or just a new document. Let's just do one at 1920 by 1080 because that's the screen resolution I'm working in. And I'm just gonna clear these guides just so they don't confuse us. And you know what, I'm gonna set this as just a nice gray just to kind of make things a little bit easier to work with. So just Alt or Option Backspace will fill that with gray. All right, that gives us a nice area. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a brand new layer. And on this layer, we wanna bring in a 3D object. So we're gonna choose 3D. So by the way, you can import a 3D model if you want, but I'm not gonna do that in this tutorial because I want you to be able to follow along exactly. So we're gonna choose New Mesh from Layer. And there's a few 3D models that are already here inside of Photoshop. So we're just gonna go down and we're gonna choose the wine bottle and it will appear in here in a second. Do we wanna to switch to the 3D workspace? Yes, we do. And basically what the 3D workspace does is it gives us the 3D panel here. And we're gonna be looking at the 3D panel and the properties. We're gonna be going through all of this. All right, so here we have what's known as geometry. Geometry is the model or the 3D shape. So there we go, we can see we've got a wine bottle right there. All right, so what we have here is we have a 3D model. Now there's two parts here. There's the world or the environment, which is our ground. See, this is our ground plane. And then there's our object that's in here. If we wanna be working in our environment, what we do is we go down to this tool here and we can move it around. So notice what I'm doing is I'm clicking on this widget and this enables me to rotate around. See how the shadows, the lights, everything moves together so we're just kind of like we're in an airplane flying around and looking at the scene we're not moving or transforming anything we're just viewing it different ways now the view mode this is what we're seeing through here is known as a camera now there's three different options here we can orbit so if we click on here and drag orbiting is what we're doing here we're moving it around we can pan panning means we're going backwards and forwards side to side so we're just kind of moving it around that way. And this one is to dolly, which means to zoom in or out. Now we're not making anything bigger or larger. Remember, we're just changing the way we are viewing it. Now up here, we see this little option. And if we click in here, we can see right now we're in the top view. We can choose a default view, which is how it starts. We can view these different things. We've got left, right, and if we wanna switch these out into the main display, we just click this little swap button. And now we can see, there we are, we're viewing it from the front. If we wanna change it, we just flip back. So we choose whatever we wanna do. So let's choose the default camera and then flip it back. And this is exactly how we started. We can always go back. So this is viewing. So that's how we view. We choose the view we wanna see, and then we switch it here. And that enables us to view our world and our 3D object. So that's kind of basis of how the world works. But let me explain another thing, X, Y, and Z. So there's three different axes in three dimensions, or the three different dimensions. There's the X, the Y, and the Z. So Y, the Y axis is up and down. So if we click on here, you'll see right there, there's the Y axis. Y, think of Y for fly. It's up and down. So it's like a pole that goes up. And if you grab that pole, and you spin around on that pole, it will orbit around. That's an object moving on the y-axis. 
Now the x-axis, if you've seen graphs, there's a y and then there's an x, the x goes from side to side. Now imagine if you grab that and then you're rolling around inside it, that's how you're using or rotating an object on the x-axis or you're sliding it from side to side, that's x. Now there's the z-axis, the z-axis is depth, that's the distance between you and me. So that means that I'm moving in, I'm moving out. So that's the three different axes. And by moving and rotating things on those different axes, and of course, if I'm rotating it on the Z axis, it's gonna go like this. Because imagine a pole going from me to you, an object on it, that's how it rotates. So that's the X, Y, and Z axis. Those are the coordinates and they work the same everywhere inside of 3D. What I'm showing you is not just Photoshop, but all 3D. Okay, so that kind of explains how that world works. I apologize if that was a little too dry. All right, now let's move on to our object. So we know we've got a world, which is our ground plane, you know, it's a scene, basically. The world is the scene and you can move around it. And that's what we've done so far. But now we want to look at actual objects. And the objects you would think of as 3D models, such as this particular bottle here. How do we get in and how do we work with this? Well, very simple. If we go into our 3D panel, you're going to see there's some different things here. We start off with our environment, which is everything here. And our scene is the different parts within the environment. This is our camera or our current view. And, you know, we've already looked at that by using this widget or we can go down here and we can also move around. See that? Okay, now we're going down to our object and the object we have is our wine bottle. I can expand it or collapse it. Why don't we collapse it for now? And now if I use these tools, Notice how I'm changing the world or the environment staying the same. Now I'm moving this around. So we're doing our orbit tool or our tumble tool as it's known in Maya. The other one that we're really going to focus on here is our move tool. So we can move this around. See that? And of course, this one here is our scale. So we can zoom in or out. We can make this larger or smaller. So we're actually changing the model in this situation here. See that? Now there's other ways we can move, like we can slide it. So, you know, this is going to slide into our 3D environment. Okay, so here's the thing that you want to understand is when we are working, and this is our rotate, move, and scale. Think of those three as our main ones we're going to work with. Okay, so if we're rotating, we can do it on a particular axis. So if you see here, see this little widget, notice if I click there, now it's only going to rotate Z axis, which is the one that goes between you and me. That's the distance I told you about. Okay, so here's our little tool. If we click in the middle, this is our scale. So this enables us to scale up or down. We've got our move, the little arrows, so we can move on the Y axis, which is up or down. Go over there, we can move it on the Z, or the X, sorry. Or we can click here and we can move it along the Z. So that's how we scale and move, and we can also rotate. So if we look up here, see that little one there? This means the Z axis, we can rotate just on that. We can go here, we can rotate on the X axis, and of course we can rotate on the Y axis. So that's the way we move it around. Now, of course we can scale individually on these different ones by grabbing that widget, but let's not do that right now. All right, so I've moved this around a lot. Why don't we reset it? So we can go here and we can do our movement. We can reset that. We can reset our rotation and we can reset our scale. And that just sets everything to zero. We could also just hit reset coordinates. Now notice it's kind of a little bit low. We need this to sit level on the ground. So we choose move to ground. And now we've got our object set again. Now, if I don't want to move the object and I want to move the entire scene, I can choose on scene and now I can move around. Or once again, I can grab these widgets. Okay, so that's how we manipulate or position our geometry. All right, now let's have a look at the properties now let's move into the properties. If we click here, we see mesh. And so here's our wine bottle. It's broken into three parts. There's a label, a bottle, and a cap. So if we click on the bottle by itself, notice how I can move that independently from the other parts. So that's essentially how you would go in and work on each of the parts. This is geometry, but it's called meshes here inside of Photoshop. So there's the label, there's the bottle, and there's the cap. All right, so that is meshes or otherwise known as shapes or geometry or just the basic models. 
The next thing we want to move on to is the surfaces. Surfaces are the materials. Those are, you know, what is it made of? You know, it's, it's the labels, it's reflection, it's shadows, it's all those different types of things. It's depth, it's texture, all of those things are involved. So let's have a quick look at that. So we go down to our 3D panel, and then we click on the next one here, which is material. Now you'll see there's material on here. There's the label material, the bottle material, and the cap. So why don't we start with the bottle? Notice up here under the properties, this changes to reflect whichever one we're clicking on. See that? So here we are, and we know that this bottle is semi-transparent. And we can actually see it up here under opacity. Let's look at something else. Let's look at the cap and look at how we can change it. So we've got all these properties that we can change, or we can actually just go up here under the material selector and we can find a material. We've got all of these materials that ship here with Photoshop. And why don't we just click on this one and see how that looks. See how now that's creating a kind of a little bit of a cork texture right there. And that's looking pretty good. So you can choose these presets. You can also change them. All right, let's talk about the properties. So if we look at the, the cap material here and we look at this, notice this little icon is different. So diffuse can either be a texture that it's using right now, or it can be a color. So why don't we work on the label? So we're gonna choose the label and we're gonna click on diffuse. And notice if I select a color, notice how we can change that color very quickly and easily. All right, so we're just using a basic color here for the label. If we want, we could use an image. There's a couple of ways of doing it. Make sure that label selected, go up here under diffuse and choose edit texture. The other way we can do it is if we go under our layers, you can see there's the different things here. And we can see under diffuse, there's our bottle label. So we could double click on there. So we can go under here, we can go to our label material and we can edit it here. So either way, one of those ways is gonna work. Or I could go up here into properties, why don't we just do an edit texture? And it's gonna show this is our texture. We don't have anything right now. So why don't we create a, a just a quick label? And I'm just gonna hit D for default and just grab white and we're gonna call this label. Very descriptive. Now, of course, you can bring all kinds of images in here and design a really nice looking label, which is what I would normally do. But I want to keep this simple, so I'm just going to go there. It looks nice. Hit save. And then we just close this. Notice what's happened is that label now is appearing on there. And in fact, if we move it around, you can see there's our label. Great. So let's change the way it's displayed. If we go up under diffuse, we can choose edit UV properties. So under UV properties, this is how we can move it. So if we want to make this label smaller or larger, all we need to do is just click on here. We can change the size of it. Doing is we're looking at width right there. That's our X axis. And then Y of course is height. So we can click here and we can make it higher. We can stretch it up or down. Now there's other things we can do. Notice it's tiling. If we set this to one, it's going to tile once and it's going to display once only. See that? Now it might look a little big, we can change the size of it, but the other thing we can do too is we can move it around. So see there, doing our X, we're able to rotate that texture around and our Y of course will move it up and down. So this is how you can change your textures and position them correctly on your objects. And I'm just gonna click okay. And if we have a look around here, we can see there's our label that we've created. Now there's other properties that we're just gonna that I'm gonna talk about really quickly, but we're not gonna get into. So that's diffuse, which is the main one you're gonna deal with. So specular would be those bright hot spots, you know, where something is very shiny and uh, you know, like ice cubes or something like that, or you know, metallic versus you know rubber. Rubber would be very low, and something like diamonds would be very high. Illumination would be like a glow. Ambient just gives it overall color. Now let's look under here quickly. We can adjust things like the shine is, you know, something is flat or it's more shiny. Reflection means it's gonna reflect the environment. So, you know, if you wanna have it, something look glossy or mirrored, you would turn that reflection all the way up. Now just bear in mind when you're working with reflection, 
it will increase rendering time significantly. And when I say rendering time, let me just drop something on you right now. Right now we're working on a very kind of a flat thing. Rendering is when Photoshop is gonna build this scene and it's going to use what's known as ray tracing and this is gonna look much more realistic. So that's where the photo real part comes in at the very end when we render. It's the last thing we do. All right, so there's other things in here, you know, roughness and bump kind of work together. That's where it looks like, you know, uh, indentations or if we wanna make that label look indented, let's, let's do it right now. I'm just gonna double click this label just to open it up. It's our label material. We're gonna open it here and I'm just gonna choose file save as. I'm gonna save a copy of it and uh, we'll just call this one bump. Just so I can show you how this works. Hit save. And what I'm also gonna do here is I'm just gonna flatten this and blur it a little bit. Just so we've got, you know, something to work with. You'll see. So just adding a little bit of a blur, hit file save, done. Notice it didn't change because we saved as, so I just created a copy of that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this in as a bump. So I'm gonna load the texture. There's the one that we created there. And click OK. See, so yeah, it's kind of created this kind of beveled kind of a look. Now we need to line that up, of course, with our label. So what we would do is we go back under our edit UV properties. And then I'm just gonna reset this label. And if I offset this by zero, and I offset this by zero. Now it's gonna match perfectly, see that? Okay, so this bump, we can increase it, see that? And it's gonna make it look more or less embossed. So now we've got kind of an embossed look. Now opacity, of course, is gonna make that more transparent. So we've got a semi-transparent label, or we've got a fully opaque label, which is what I'm gonna go with. Now we've got the last one here is refraction such as a lens or a magnifying glass, the environment behind it is going to distort. So if we keep the refraction at zero, that's the same as air. It's not going to affect anything. If we increase that refraction, it's going to start to distort like we're looking through lenses or, you know, we're looking through glasses or something like that. It will make things behind it distort, which will add a level of realism. It will also increase rendering time. All right, so we've now covered the basics of surfaces. The next thing we're going to do is we're now going to move into lighting. And this is where we start to make the scene look more realistic or match the objects you're going to work with. Say, for example, you're going to put an object into a photograph. Then we're going to set the light direction, color, and intensity. So once again, we're working in the scene level. Let's go to the 3D. And we've done our labels here. It's looking pretty good. Now we're going to move up here and we're going to choose our lighting. So this is where we light our scene. Now there's three different types of lighting. Infinite, point, and spot. So a point light is like a light bulb. And you can see it's right there. If you want to move it into view, just click here and that will drop it so it's illuminating the object we're working on. Now we can move this light up or down. See what we're doing here is we're moving that light up or down. And you can also watch the shadow behind the bottle. See that as it goes higher, that shadow gets shorter. We can see it there. In fact, why don't I rotate the scene a little bit so you can see a little bit easier. And there's our light. So this is, consider this, you know, like a light bulb. And we can just move it, we can position it in 3D space. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of color into it just to make it a little easier to see what it's doing. So I'm gonna make it a little bit warm, like we have a light bulb going on in a room. And we can position that however we want. Now notice there's a shadow behind the bottle. We can turn that shadow on or off just by clicking there, the shadow is now off. And what I'm gonna do is use this as an ambient light. So I'm gonna turn the intensity down. If we turn it up high, it gets very bright. Low, it gets very low, you know, so there's almost no illumination. So let's bring it just a little bit. So it's just kind of lighting that bottle. Now this is also a time when you would choose the views differently. So we might go to something like say a top view and then we flip that around and now you can see where that light is. It makes it easier for you to position that by sliding it around. See that? So we can position it there. And then the other way you might want to do it is to look at it, maybe a left or a right, a side view. And yet now you can get the height of the light. See that? So we can set our height. And then of course, let's go back to our default view. 
which is right there. And let's just kind of rotate it around until we're viewing it how we like. So this is the angle we want to view it at. All right, so let's look at other lights. So we're going to add a light. So we're going to go under lights and we're going to add a new spotlight. Now let me talk about the three different types of lights. A point light is like a light bulb. Infinite light is a directional light that doesn't have any fall off. It just is like the sun. So it comes from a light source and it's just moving in one direction. And then a spotlight is, as you would imagine, it's a spotlight. So let's create the spotlight. And this is our spotlight right here. And why don't I point it at origin? And what that's going to do is if you ever get messed up, it's going to point it right at our object. And of course, move to view, we'll put it right on our object. So let's rotate around a little bit to see what we've got. As you can see, there is our spotlight right there. If we click on something like here, see how we can rotate that spotlight. Um, so we can rotate it in different axes like that, see that? And there's another way of working. If we hit the Alt or the Option key, we can just click where we want that spotlight to go, which is a very useful way of doing it. So I do that. Another way to do it is to hold the Shift key, and you can actually drag around on the shadow to move the light. So there's a couple of tips for you on working with that light. Now let's look at some of the things with the spotlight. I'm going to give it a color just to make it easier. Let's give it a pink color just so we can see what it's doing. Let's go really crazy with it. And we're going to increase the intensity, make it super bright. Now, I just want to kind of show the fall off here. So we've got a hot spot and a cone. So what this does is the hot spot is the inside area. And what's going to happen is this light's going to feather between the two. And so if we make that cone smaller, we've got a very thin focused light. Or we can make it very wide, which is going to have a lot of fall off here between the two. It's going to create a softer light. You can, of course, click on these and you can drag these manually up or down to change the size of them. And we can go between our lights by clicking here. We go back to our regular light here and we go here to our spotlight. So we can always go in there and we can adjust them that way. Now we can create light fall off, which means that that light will get less intense as it goes further away in the square law kind of thing. All right, so we can have the light fall off. And notice here it makes it just less intense and that means as that light got closer it would be more intense and let me show you this we'll switch to a different view here and uh, in fact why don't we go to the top view and as we move this light in watch what happens see how that light gets more intense because of that fall off now once again fall off will add a lot of uh, realism but it will also take longer for that to render all right, so let's go back to our default view and let's move things around. So we're kind of looking at our, our shot right there and let's just zoom out a little bit. Let's dolly out. Just to give us a little bit more to work with. Excellent. Now, if you want to keep using this and you don't want to have to keep changing this view all the time, we can save this view, by the way. So we're going to go to our 3D panel. Make sure you click on the camera. This is our current view. This is what we're looking at here. And if we go up under view, we can save this. We can just choose save and we're going to call it hero as our hero shot. Click OK. And now we'll see that under here. So if we mess this up and we've got things all messed up, in fact, let's go to our hero view and we've got it all messed up. We want to go back to that. All we simply need to do is go under here, choose hero, click there. And now we've got our camera angle. So that's our view we're working with. All right, let's go back to our lights. I want to choose our spotlight and I'm going to take that color off. We're just going to go just to a normal light here. And when you take the color off, it gets a little brighter. So let's drop it down a little bit. So now we're going to look at two other things, rendering, and then we're going to finish off with some animation. So with the rendering, this enables us to actually view what this is going to look like. So the quickest way to render this out is to either just click on render right there or we can also do the modify keys by holding down the shift alt option R. All right, so we can see the rendering starting to happen. I'm going to hit the escape key to shorten that down. Now, there's some other things we can do here is the shadow. We can make the shadow much softer. 
So by increasing that softness, it will soften that shadow. And in fact, why don't I just grab the marquee tool and I'm just going to select around there and I'm going to hit render. And now it's just going to render in that area instead of the whole thing. Now I do warn you, rendering does take a long time. Increasing things like shadow softness, uh, reflections, things like that are going to increase rendering times. If I'm going to hit the escape key and you can see what's starting to happen there, we're getting a nice soft shadow there. All right, let's have a look at our render settings. So to do that, go to a 3D panel and we're going to grab our first option, click on environment. And up here we can do image based lighting and all kinds of other things. We can turn shadows on and off right there. Now there's other things. We can turn shadows on and off and softness. This is a global across the whole image. We can go down to the scene and under the scene, we've got other ways we can do this. So here's presets. So we can render this out in different ways. You know, if we wanted to do wireframes and things like that, we could choose a wireframe there and we could render that out, for example. And you can kind of see that wireframe right there. So we can change the way that views. Um, you know, we can do depth maps. We can do all kinds of different things here. So I'm just going to go back to default. If we choose the second option here, we can actually look at what we would do if we were doing 3D printing. This gives us a lot of options there. So that's the basics of rendering. Now we're going to jump into animation where we're going to animate the different parts of this bottle individually. So here we are with the bottle. And what we're going to do is open up our timeline. So we're just going to hit window timeline. And I'm going to create a video timeline. Now we can just open up the layer and we'll see that there's different parts in here. So what we want to do here is we're going to go to the 3D meshes. These are the parts of the bottle that we want to animate. So there's our wine bottle. Let's open this up. Now, of course, you can animate the lights and all kinds of different things. But why don't we start with a cap? So we're going to go down here and we're going to select a little stopwatch. And that's going to start some kind of animation on the cap here. Now, let's make sure that we're choosing our cap. So now that's selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward in time and I'm going to lift the cap off the bottle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go there into the Y and I'm just going to move that up. Notice it applies a keyframe. So if we look in between this now, see that and I hit the play button, which is just the space bar. Now we've been able to animate that lid coming off the bottle. Great. Now what if we want to make that bottle fall over? Okay, so here's the thing. If you grab just the bottle, and we turn that on and we try to animate the bottle. This is what's going to happen. Let me select the bottle here. And we just want to kind of rotate that. Notice that the label's not going with it. So what we need to do is undo that. And we need to get the bottle and the cap together. So I'm going to hit the shift key. I'm selecting both of these right click and choose group objects. So it's going to group them together. Now, if we go under there, we can find this. Here's our wine bottle. There's our new group. So what we actually want to do is I'm going to start our animation here. Move that play here to where I want it to begin. Click on the stopwatch by the new group. And that new group, of course, contains both the label and the bottle. And we're going to move forward in time to about there making sure a new group is selected. Now we can go up and we can grab to rotate this and just kind of rotate it across like that. Now watch what happens. There we go. So if we hit the space bar to play this, the lid goes up, the bottle and the label rotates together. So you can very easily animate things like this inside of Photoshop. So as you can see, we can animate individual objects. Did you guys know you could do that in Photoshop? Let me know in the comments underneath if you're still watching. So well, let's recap a little bit. So what we've essentially done is we've broken this into the different parts of the 3D pipeline. The first part is setting up the environment and putting the objects in there. That's our geometry. The second part is working with our 
surface qualities, you know, our textures, our colors, these kind of things, that's the materials. Then the third part is making the scene look photorealistic, and that's where we're working with lighting and rendering. And then, of course, we touched on a little bit of animation at the end. There's a lot more to this. It's a very involved topic, but I tried to kind of give you guys a high-level overview in a short amount of time as possible without going too fast and leaving you behind. So hopefully you found this useful. Um, if you did, let me know in the comments underneath. And I know there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube and I feel like a lot of the Photoshop ones are just kind of the same and I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to do things that are original and new for you guys. Let me know if that's helping and what you've learned in the comments underneath. So anyway, if you like Photoshop and Lightroom and you want a new tutorial, I post a new one every single Tuesday. Hit the subscribe button right now so you don't miss it. Ring the notification bell so you know when I upload. I try to do it first thing in the morning. Sometimes it gets a little later in the day because I get busy and I want to produce you know, good quality tutorials for you guys every single week. And by the way, if you like this, don't keep the secret. Tell your friends, share it with your friends, share it on social media, and also smash that like button into dust. All right, guys, this was a long one. <laughs> I'm going to get busy editing this now and uploading it for you. So until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.